She is not only an inspiration to me, but to a lot of young people. She has had a long, amazing journey right from Intel to being Forbes Asia 100 Most Powerful Women. To talk more about this, about her journey, we have Lakshmi Prakash. good at shouting out. So what is the one thing that's necessary for success in this world? The one word. What is necessary for success? Hard? Okay, you know what my answer is? The one thing that's necessary to succeed in this world is failure. talk to you about the four things that I believe are necessary to succeed. First, sorry, the previous one. The first one, you know, and I like giving words that you remember, so think of the word. The first one is failure, and I want to share with you about a failure that really defined my life. Way before you were born, I was there in IIT Bombay as a student. And, and I'm from Hyderabad, you know, did my undergrad, but I was like one of those PGs, you know, not really the undergrad. So I wasn't really cool enough, but all right. And um, I did my undergrad, I was top of my university, really flying high, first one in my family to go to IIT, I was in IIT Bombay, and I failed miserably. First time, first term, a D. I've never tasted anything less than 95% in my life. And I got a D. And life, I mean, life ended as we know it. And I was miserable. And what is even worse was that I realized for the first time, I hated being a mathematician. I mean, it was like something I've decided a long time ago, I'm going to study math, I've become a statistician or a mathematician, I'm going to do a PhD. I mean, my whole life was designed for me, and I went there, and I hated it. I hated math. And here I am, 19 years old, well, like really old at that time, it felt like. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I hated math. So my dad came, and then he said that, I have never seen you this miserable in your life. You know, you're always laughing, you're always fun, you're always crying, what's the matter? I said, I hate math. He said, quit it. And I couldn't believe it. You know, here I'm in my master's, and he says, quit it. And that was the biggest moment of my life where I realized that failure was okay. In fact, that gave me the opportunity to really think about what is it that I really wanted to be. And I went into MBA not knowing what MBA was, but it's something other than mathematics. That's all I knew. And I went and I loved it. So that became my career for the next 15 years. I've uh, been in management. And so to me, that I am today defined by all the failures I had in my life. Not just that one. Every one failure I had is what defines me. So that's the first thing. And the second one, A, is for really a unbiased appraisal of yourself. You know, what am I doing? You can't answer anybody. You have to answer yourself. So I worked at Intel for many years. So Andy Grove is my corporate father. And when I interviewed him once, I asked him, as a corporate CEO, what grade do you give yourself? And imagine, you know, when I started at Intel, it was a billion dollar quarter company. When I left Intel, it was a 30 billion dollar company with 60,000 people. I'm under Andy's leadership be one of the world's best companies. And he graded himself a B plus. And I asked him why. And he said the true power of a CEO is the legacy, the business plan he leaves for the company for the next 20 years, not what he did in the 20 years that he was there. He felt he didn't do a good job of leaving a great business plan. That's why he gave himself a B plus. That is the power of assessment. That is the power of being absolutely I've learned is important for um, you know success. The third thing is insecurity. 
I think we need to know our insecurities really well and build on them. And for me, when I was about seven years old, I was put on a stage like this and I hid under a table. I was petrified of standing in front of people. And I've made it my job to every time put myself out there. It is most petrifying for me to be in front of you because I'm most petrified of being in front of my son because I don't know how to communicate with him. I have an eight-year-old and he's like smarter than me. And I don't know how to talk to him sometimes. So I feel that when you're young, when I was young, when you're trying things that are out there, when trying things that are like nobody believes it. I remember in 19 when running around the company saying, someday we'll all take laptops and you know you won't need desktops at all and you'll be using laptops. And people looked at us like we're crazy. And but we kept at it, kept at it for three years, and that vision did come true. But in the moment when you're trying something that's out there, you feel utterly unknown. You feel that nobody is listening to you. Everybody around you is getting accolades for all the things that are they're doing that are status quo, and here you are out there doing something different. So I felt that I wanted to create something, which is Inc. now. I wanted it to be a platform for those who are out there, to let them know you're not out there. We are there for you. So that's really the purpose of Inc. and what we have created. And, and the last piece is our, you know, it's the most important thing is the relationships. You know, you can get a degree, but you can learn if you have a relationship with what you're studying. You can have a job, but you can have a career if you have a relationship with what you're doing. And I feel that today, it's my father, my husband, my son, my Inc. family. These are my relationships on which I stand on. And it terrifies me sometimes. I should have joined Google when I knew it started. I should have joined Facebook. I should have made my millions. But I decided the legacy I'm going to leave for my son is my relationships. Because that's what you want at the end of the day is, I wonder what will happen to him if he, well, he wants to go to the college and the money is not there. What happens to him if he wants to get, you know, go do this and the money is not there. But if the right relationships are there, everything will fall in place. So, fair, being fair, that is what is the key to success for me. And what we are about at Inc. is that we live by one quote, and many of you who ever heard me have heard me say this, is that life ought not to be measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take our breath away. So, a new billionaire space, which is billionaires of moments. It's those who create those moments for others. It's those who create those impact for others. So that's really what we are about. So when you're doing something new, it's not a question of why. Think of why not? Why not now? And what am I willing to give up to get that? Because nothing comes free. You have to give up something. So I truly want to invite all of you to step out a little bit of your, out of your comfort zone and do things that you truly, truly believe in. So I want to leave you with one story. I call her my flower girl. And you wonder sometimes, you do these things, you do these conferences, and people come, listen, they are inspired, they go home. What does that matter? Is, does this create any impact in the world at all? So in our first conference, we have Sunita Krishnan, who runs something called Prajwala, which rescues women out of prostitution and gives them a home. And uh, she came and spoke. Her talk was so powerful. And I asked her at the end that, what is the one thing you wish you had? She said, the problem with prostitution is not the prostitutes, not the pimps, it's us. Because we don't want them living among us. So when they come in our neighborhood, we don't want them living. She said, we get shunted every few minutes out of uh, wherever we live. So we, I wish we had a permanent home. Her talk was so powerful, people stood up in the audience and committed money to her. And what we realized is that people act out of impulse, but you need to work on it to make it happen. So for six months, we worked with everybody who committed as well as Google, who gave the largest ever grant they gave to Sunita. 18 months from the time she stood on the stage, she had a permanent home on a three-acre land with a school for the children, 
with an industry for the women and a home for the women. That is the, that is the power of a great talk and an audience that does something about it. So I want to leave you with this girl because I call her my flower girl. She's, she was, she's one of Sunita's girls. She was seven years old when she was, um, she's a mentally imbalanced child. She was seven years old when she was um, rescued from prostitution and brought home. And I met her for the first time in Sunita's house. She's beautiful. And, uh, um, and they felt that they couldn't handle her, so there was a home, special home for especially mentally uh, imbalanced people. They sent her there. Two years later, they found that that home put her back in business. So they rescued her and brought her. And at the age of nine, she passed away. And whenever I complain about, man, I'm not making enough money, or somehow, you know, all the audience I want are not coming, or this is not happening, that's not happening, I think of her. I think of the power of what we have done, has done for her, which is give her a wonderful home in the last few years of her life. And I say, we have nothing to complain about. So we want to welcome you to the world of billionaire of moments and join us at Ink Talks. Thank you.